So they got the guy, a serial killer busted, an alleged serial killer in custody right now. They arrested him last night. For decades, this guy was strangling women at the beach. A total horror show. Uh, these women, 10 of them, have been linked to this suspect. Uh, but in court today, formally, uh, they're actually tying him to just four, four of the murders for now. They expect it to increase in number as they gather more evidence and as they make their case. The suspect, Rex Hoyerman. Does he fit the serial killer profile? I don't know. 59 years old, an architect, a CEO of a small firm, married father of two, no criminal record that we, that we know of. Now, so far overall, the evidence, well, there's DNA, they say, tying him to the victims and also cell phone records. He was buying burner phones and the women, well, they were receiving phone calls from, they believe, his burner phones. And he's been buying them left and right fairly recently. This is just in May, going into a phone store and putting more minutes on a burner phone. Uh, how they actually got his DNA is from a pizza. They saw a half-eaten or discarded pizza. They took it out of the trash. Uh, that's how they got his DNA and they compared it to the DNA that was recovered at the crime scene. They also found out he's into a lot of really weird uh, sexual stuff. I mean, we're talking, well, it's kind of unspeakable what he was into. And this just might be, I mean, it's all terrible. But after he allegedly killed one of the prostitutes, he took her phone and called her family to say, yeah, I did it, and said all kinds of awful stuff. From the, uh, from the uh, charging document and the bail uh, thing, uh, Herman is believed to, Hoyerman is believed to be the person who used the burner cell phones to communicate with each of the four victims prior to their disappearance. And then afterwards, a caller made taunting phone calls to Miss uh, Bartholomew's family members in which the male caller admitted killing and sexually assaulting the woman, and he did this repeatedly repeatedly. Then he went on vacation for a couple of days in Iceland. The calls start uh, stopped. As soon as he got back from Iceland, the calls started again. And this is something we don't normally see, although sometimes we do. The alleged killer speaking last year during an interview for French television. Rex, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good to see you. Likewise. I hope you don't mind. I brought my assistant with me. Norman. Hello, hello Norman. <laughs> I see it's raining out. It's a little bit unclear why they wanted to interview him, but uh, they did. Rex Hewerman, I'm an architect. I'm an architectural consultant. I'm a troubleshooter. Born and raised on Long Island. Okay. Been right. working in Manhattan since 1987. All right, seems like a fairly normal individual. Um, and then there's this. Does this suggest something off? If you were a tool or an object to help you uh, in your, uh, to help you to bring your business to greater heights, what would it be? That's an interesting question. I know. <laughs> because for what I do, we have to have so many tools in the toolbox. Uh, just one. Just one. Just one. I have one tool that's pretty much used in almost every job. And it's actually a cabinet maker's hammer. Kimmy, oh, okay, and cabinet maker hammer. Okay. It is persuasive enough <laughs> when I need to persuade something. It's Not someone. Something. <laughs> and it always yields excellent results. What's he talking about? Uh, persuading people with a hammer. All kinds of profilers are on TV today saying he looks like a control freak. Architects sometimes are like that. That's what they said, not me. Uh, have you ever seen one of these hammers? The back of the hammer is kind of straight. It does look kind of menacing in this context. Some of the stuff he was allegedly Googling, well, he wanted to know all about the case. Uh, they tracked these phones and he was looking up stuff on the internet like, uh, why could law enforcement not trace the calls made by the Long Island serial killer? This is what he wanted to know. Why hasn't the Long Island serial killer been caught? These are his own Google searches. Uh, inside the Long Island serial killer and Gilgo Beach, 
the Gilgo Beach killer, Criminal Minds. This was on TV. He wanted to see himself on TV. In Long Island, serial killer investigation, new phone technology may be key to break in the case. So he was on top of this big time, and we believe he actually watched this program about himself years before he was caught. We have a serial killer. We have a killer in our, you know, community walking around free today. This morning, new information in the manhunt for a serial killer whose trail of terror has led police to a beach in New York's Long Island. Police just released sketches of two people whose remains were found along Ocean Parkway. Three more bodies. Four unidentified bodies. Eight bodies. Ten sets of human remains have been found. Police say none of the bodies is that of Shannon Gilbert, the prostitute whose disappearance sparked the initial search. My sister went missing July 9, 2007. She was from Norwich, Connecticut. Uh, she went to New York and she never came home. Megan Waterman was my daughter. She lived in Scabo. She went missing June 6th of 2010. Wow. So he watches this stuff. Do we think it makes him feel like a big man? Or does he worry about getting caught? Does he feel guilt? I wonder. Maybe we'll never know. And of course, pretty early on, it got political. People were pointing out on the internet and talk radio that... The district the guy lives in is represented by a Republican congressman. The district voted for Trump. Therefore, this guy, the suspect, must be MAGA. <laughs> must be MAGA, huh? Well, what if he is? What difference does that make, right? It's, they're trying to say everybody MAGA is like this. That's insane. But they were really trying to make that case. I could make that case, too. I wouldn't, but I could. I could point out that John Wayne Gacy who killed, I think, how many people did he kill? How many children did he kill? More than 30? Was raising money for Democrats? Yes, so much so that he got to meet the first lady of the United States at the time, Rosalind Carter, <laughs> married to Jimmy Carter. It's insane, though, to make these, like, oh, that, that somehow besmirches Democrats or the Carters. It's, it's insane. Uh, and that's what they're actually trying to do uh, to MAGA. That's the world we live in. But anyway, let's get back to the great, the pretty good uh, investigative work. Look, there are some people out there who think that this should have been solved a while ago. It's great that it was solved. We heard from the DA of Suffolk County. One thing that became immediately apparent uh, th was at the time of, the, of each of the murders, uh, the murderer, the, the defendant, Herman, uh, he got a, a, uh, he got a, a cell phone uh, and a burner phone, which, uh, which is prepaid and anonymous. And for each of the murders, he got an individual burner phone, and he used that to communicate with the victims. Uh, then shortly after uh, the death of the victims, uh, he then would, uh, would get rid of the burner phone. All right. Uh, what else? He was searching, compulsively searching pictures of the victims, but not only pictures of the victims, pictures of their, uh, their uh, relatives, their, their, their sisters, uh, their children, uh, and he was trying to locate those individuals. Uh, in addition to that, there was a lot of uh, torture, uh, porn, and, and uh, um, what you would consider, uh, you know, uh, um, Depictions of women uh, being abused, uh, being raped, and being killed. Yeah, I read the um, the complaint, torture stuff, torture porn. Uh, it's it's crazy. So there's that um, like kind of electronic evidence, and then there's also the DNA. One of the things that we did is we followed him because we wanted to get an abandonment sample of his DNA, uh, which we were able to do. Uh, we also got uh, DNA samples, abandonment samples from his family. And then we went back and we got mitochondrial DNA testing. All right, good job. Now, the guy, remember, the suspect is an architect. He's an architect, and that's, he's got to get certified like seven years, I think it takes. And people noticed that his house was like the real eyesore on the block in Massapequa Park. Uh, I mean, you know, look, you can do wonders with that place. He's an architect. Why didn't he? 
uh, you know, just didn't take care of it. Kind of uh, strange, right? And yeah, when he showed up for work, he looked kind of spiffy, but the house was was a mess. You know, I feel terrible for the families of the victims. And at times like this, I know it's kind of, I wish I didn't, but I also feel about the family members of the accused. Now, they had nothing to do with this. No one's saying that. The wife, what she's going through. The daughter, what, what she's going through. Uh, that's got to be incredibly difficult and kind of unthinkable. You know, everybody has sympathy for the victims, of course, but for these folks, it's, it's different. And it just, it must be very, very tough. This is what we like, though, from law enforcement. A great job, okay? They were great. They were great. I like it when they focus on this kind of stuff. Hmm? I can't stand it when they do stuff like this, though. In order to complete the scheme, they plan to mischaracterize the repayments to Mr. Cohen as income to the New York State tax authorities. That's one of my favorites, D.A. Bragg going after Trump. Did you hear that? <laughs> the scheme was to portray the money as income. I never thought of that ever as a crime. This is money we're taking. It's income. <laughs> that, telling the IRS that you have income is not a crime. But anyway, yeah, I don't like this. I don't like Jack Smith, a federal prosecutor, uh, making a federal case out of the, these boxes, presidential material. You can look it up in his latest uh, motion. Even he has to admit that there's no criminality under the Presidential Records Act. Um, now, the FBI, uh, there was an FBI uh, presence on the task force, and, and that's great. But uh, sometimes, sometimes they get into bragging a lot, the, M the FBI. They do. Um, it's part of the mythology that started all the way back under J. Edgar Hoover and persists to this day. Do you ever feel the hair on the back of your neck stand up? That's your intuition, and you should listen to it. I was in the FBI for 25 years. I developed an investigative tool called criminal profiling, and I'm going to teach you some of the tactics I've used from the people I interviewed. What is their motive? And what is their behavior? I have grown up for the same purpose of years before you have death and kill girls. You'll be learning how to spot these character traits in others. The skills taught in this class could very well save your life. All right, sounds like a great TV show, riveting, but a lot of it is, yeah, FBI mythology. They're kind of always right after the fact. It's on my mind because I saw Christopher Ray. Uh, the ultimate bureaucrat, uh, deflect, uh, use little tricks to not take responsibility. And, well, that's what they do, bureaucrats, right? And when it gets down to actual procedures and what happens, sometimes they'll talk about it and sometimes they won't. Very selective of when and where. Watch. In some instances, we will choose to charge a case a certain way to protect sources and methods. But I am also unwilling to budge on talking about ongoing investigations and protecting sources and methods. I think if we start exposing sources and methods, we are setting a dangerous precedent. Well, you saw from that uh, master class guy, they're talking about methods all the time, all the time. It's part of how they keep the myth of the FBI going, and a lot of it is myth. You ever see this TV show? A gunman out for revenge. Judges and government officials his targets. How FBI agents went undercover to stop his plan. There's no stopping in undercover work. You say it comes out of your mouth, and you got to live with it. Everything inside of you is screaming, oh my god, I hope he doesn't find out that I'm an agent. My name is Mike Ghibli. I've been an FBI undercover agent for 19 years. All right, so that, that's great. This guy can talk about all of that stuff, but the director of the FBI can't give us a straight answer as to why they sat on the Hunter Biden laptop. Know what I mean? It's frustrating, isn't it? If you watch coverage of this case, you may have heard this terminology. They talked about sex workers a lot. 
Those stunning discoveries really coming after police began searching for 24-year-old sex worker Shannon Gilbert back in 2010. Investigators say most of the victims were young women who had been sex workers. These murders happened. These are women who were sex workers. There was a lot of speculation that police were just not working hard enough because these women's occupations. You know, that's a really cheap shot. I haven't heard that. <laughs> a lot of serial killers, unfortunately, prey on sex workers, also known as prostitutes. Jack the Ripper, most famous serial killer of uh, all time, preyed on prostitutes. And I think we should call them prostitutes. These are human beings, obviously, right? Beautiful human beings, everybody created in the image of God. Uh, the profession, though, it's not really a profession, okay? Sex worker, that suggests something that, I don't know, maybe one would aspire to it. And if you make that kind of euphemism, maybe more people will be drawn to it. It has to have a little bit of, it has to be somewhat pejorative. There has to be a little bit of, yeah, it's okay to have a little bit of socially frowning upon something like prostitution, sex workers, construction workers, see, sex work, right? right? That's honorable, that's good. Um, being a prostitute, that's bad for the prostitutes. It's bad for everybody, and we have to call it for what it is. May God bless the innocent, and we'll be right back.